Hello everyone, my name's Simon. Welcome to another video where I'm going to share with you some hints and tips about how to improve your online teaching. And in this video, I'm going to be tackling one of the bigger questions and definitely one of the most difficult ones. That is, how do you play internet or PC sound, in other words, YouTube clips or listening exercises through Skype or Zoom? Now, in OBS, you can't do this, which means that if you want your student to do a listening exercise, then you would send a link to your student or your student would put on the CD and you would say, click on this link, listen to this, which means that your student would control the listening exercise. Now you are going to be in a position to control the listening and that will allow you to do a lot more with that listening task, particularly if you do lots of work with YouTube clips as I do. Okie dokie. There are some caveats though. And the caveats are, I'm going to explain this to you in the way that I understand it. Now I am not a sound engineer. It's taken me many hours to get this right. And in this I've had to go through various phases of discovery to work out what's going on exactly. So I'm not going to explain this as a sound engineer. I'm going to invent my own meta language in order to go through the process, but I will be explaining it in a way that hopefully you will be able to follow without any problems. And so as such, this is how it works for me. Okay, so this is, this is my setup. Now, the program that we're going to be using is an incredibly complex program, and we're just going to be using a tiny part of that program. So there probably are many other ways to achieve the same end result. Fantastic. If they are, great. If you manage to do it, fantastic. From my point of view, I needed, I had a problem, I had to solve the problem, it works, I'm not going to touch it again. So I'm just going to explain this process to you step by step, exactly what to do, and exactly the same way that I did it. On that note, I'm not going to be able to help you if you've got technical problems. If you follow the process exactly, it should work. If it doesn't work, then I would recommend two simple but two simple things, but they really do work, and I speak from experience is exactly what I did yesterday. The first one is this. If you're not getting the result that you want to get, turn the program on and off. Really, it works. Sometimes there's a bit of a lag for the program to accept the new setting or whatever it might be. Turning it on and off does work. Secondly, turn the computer on and off as well. We will be playing a little bit with a computer setting. So turning on, turning the computer on and off does help as well. Outside of that, if you've got any problems, you can leave a comment below, but I'll be honest with you, I'm probably not going to be able to help you out. Now this video hopefully will take less than 15 minutes. There aren't a million steps here. There's only about, I don't know, um, a number, a short number of steps. This is uh, a relatively simple process, I would say, and hopefully if you follow my instructions exactly, then it will be a simple process for you. The first part of that process is to download the virtual sound mixer, which is voice meter banana. Now, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid for using it. This is just the program I use. It's a fantastic program and it's free. So as far as a teacher is concerned, great news. Um, go to the official website. There's a link below. Download it only from the official website. And once you've downloaded it onto your computer, then let's begin. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is explain to you how this works or the background in the same way I had to explain to myself. And I really did have to explain to myself. I I've been going through this process for the last week or so trying to get it right. And in order to do that, I had to explain it to myself so I understood it. Now, of course, that's how I understand it. This is not by any means the correct technical explanation, but Hopefully the way that I understand it will allow you to understand what's going on as well. So this is the basic setup. You've got a microphone, you plug it into your computer, and it goes out of the speakers. And now we have sound. When you've got hardware, then this is easy to control because you either plug in that microphone or that microphone and you tell the computer which sound source, making up my own meta language here, which sound source you want to use. The problem comes when you're using software because the software is in the computer and the computer can't or it's very difficult to control the sound source of software. 
So of course you can turn the software on or off, but if you want to use several pieces of software together, then it's very difficult to say, I don't want the sound from this, I don't want the sound from this, I only want the sound from this. So to do that, we need to have a virtual sound mixer, and this is the banana, as I'm going to call it. This will allow you to select software sound sources and hardware sound sources, and it's an integral part of being able to play sound through Skype or through Zoom. Now, this is a f an idea that we're already familiar with. Uh, in order to get OBS working with Skype or Zoom, we had to download a virtual web, uh, a virtual web camera so that Skype and Zoom can see that. So this is just a virtual sound mixer. So we should already be familiar with the concept of virtual pieces of equipment. The next thing that we've got to work out, and this was a revolutionary discovery, I'm not joking to you, this is, I finally figured this out yesterday, the order of sound flow, another piece of meta language I invented. In order to get the end result that we want, that is YouTube sound through uh, going to the student, we've got to get the order of sound in the correct order. So, and this is the problem that I had last week and the weeks before, is that I didn't work this out, so it was really difficult for me to understand why isn't this working, why isn't this working, but as soon as I figured this out, it sounds really simple now, but it took me ages to figure this out, um, then it makes your life a whole lot easier. And we want the order to be this. We want it to be microphone, which then talks to the computer, and then in the computer, we've got all of the browsers and OBS. We then want that to talk to Skype or Zoom, and then we want this to go out of our speakers. And it makes sense, and it really was difficult for me to understand this, um, because if the order was wrong, if we had Skype before YouTube, then the sound from Skype would then go into YouTube, which would then go to the speakers, which of course is not what we wanted, or we want, and it won't work. And um, I spent, a f I, I keep, on, I'll say this several times, I spent several hours over the last week wasting my time because I didn't think of, figure out this simple principle. So we need a virtual sound mixer and we need to get the order of sound flow correct. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set this up with OBS. It's a step-by-step -step process. I'm going to be saying, do this, do that. And you'll probably have lots of questions like why and how and things like that. Two things. One, a detailed explanation is way outside the scope of this video. And number two, I probably couldn't explain it anyway. So just put your faith in me and click the buttons I asked you to click and everything should work. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up the hardware, that is connect your microphone and speakers to Banana. So what I'll drag across my Banana now, here it is. For you, it will probably say Hardware Input 1. So click on that and it brings up a list of potential microphones you can use. So select the microphone you want to use. If you want to change the name as I have done, so I've called this microphone, right click on the term and it will bring up a field which you can write in. Now let's choose our speakers and we can do that by clicking on A1. So once again, it brings up a list of things that could be used as speakers. Choose the correct speaker for you and then close and then that will close. Okay, we've now connected up the hardware to the banana. So let's now deal with the software. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on B1. So this is a B1 here. So this is your microphone. Think of this as your microphone controls. And we're going to click on this on uh, B1 here. Now B1 is going to talk to this virtual output. Now my arrowhead is just covering this, but you'll see it says B1 here. This is now going to, we are now going to connect this to OBS. So in OBS, we will choose this output, which is the VIAO output. So let me bring across OBS, and we're gonna click on File, Settings, Audio, and here, for mic uh, and auxiliary audio, we will choose the VAIO option. Now be careful here, because there are two options. There's AUX VAIO and VAIO. We want this one here, no AUX. AUX we'll be using for something else. While we're here for desktop audio, you want to select the input. Okay, so for the microphone, you've got the output. For the desktop audio, you've got the input. Once again, 
V-A-I-O, not AUKS. Click on Apply, and then click on OK, and that's OBS configured. Let's get back to the presentation. What this does is that it sends the sound or the signal through to this virtual input here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to connect that to our speakers by clicking A1. So A1 talks to A1 here, and now we have created a loop. So the sound from the microphone goes into the computer, which goes to the banana, which is then sent to OBS, which is then sent back to the banana, which is then sent to your speakers. And so now we've, as I said, we've completed the loop. We are now sending sound all the way through um, the computer, the banana, OBS, back through the speakers. One job done. So above my head, you'll see that OBS is connected through the VAIO outputs and inputs. Now we're going to connect Skype. How do we do this? What we're going to do is we're going to click on the B2 button on the microphone. So B2 talks to this output here, the B2 output. Now this is called VIAO AUX. You see, this is why you can't press this on OBS. So this AUX output is going to go to Skype and Zoom. Now in the settings for Skype and Zoom, there will be a microphone setting. In that microphone setting, you will see this option, VIAO AUX output. For the speakers in Skype and Zoom, you want to choose this option, which is VIAO AUX input. And what this does is that sends the signal to this virtual input here. And now we're going to press A1, which then sends it back through our speakers. So now we've connected a second loop. So the sound from the microphone goes into the computer, which gets sent to the banana, which then gets sent to Skype or Zoom, which then gets sent back to the banana, the computer, and then out through the speakers. So now we've got something that looks like this. This is what you should now see. So B1, B2 highlighted under the microphone. And then for both virtual inputs here, A1 and A2. You'll see my uh, mouse, the cursor flying over these things. So have a look at the screen carefully and these options should be highlighted. Okay. Now we've got, as I called them, two loops. We've got the microphone talking to OBS, banana, etc., etc., is going to the speakers, and the same for Skype. What we need to do now is we need to put them in the same loop, in the same, in the correct order. So OBS before Skype and Zoom. Right, what we're also going to do is we're going to put the computer and therefore the browsers in the loop as well in the correct place, thinking about the flow. And this is really easy to do. So for the computer, which controls the browser that you're using, what you've got to do is navigate to the main sound page for the computer. And you've got to change the settings to VAIO. So, okay, so here at the bottom right of the screen, you can see my cursor going to work you're going to have this uh, speaker uh, option here. We're going to right click on that. And this is all in Polish, but in the English, I imagine it's in the same position. We want to go to open the settings for sound. And here, this is where we're going to choose the correct option. And here, this is the VAIO option. Okay, not AUX, VAIO. So select that. And for the, this, I can't, can't remember what this is in English, but for this option, you want to select the same option, VAIO. And if you select that, we have now set the computer, or we've told the computer to send all sound through to banana. Okay, now here, this might be a good place to restart the computer, because sometimes this doesn't work straight away. Sometimes uh, it just needs a restart just to make sure that these settings are in place. So if it doesn't work, this is something for you to think about. And so that's what I just say on this page as well. Navigate to the main sound page, change the settings to VAIO and restart the computer. And oh, and this is another important point. Make sure that Banana automatically turns on 
when the computer turns on. If Banana doesn't turn on, what you've done now is you've changed the settings of your computer to talk to Banana. If Banana doesn't work, you're not going to hear anything. So make sure that Banana is turned on. It's also good to remember that for in the future. So for example, if for whatever reason you delete Banana, you don't need it anymore, and then you've got all of these settings which need to be changed, then this is just something to bear in mind. Okay, so now we've set up the settings for the computer. Okay, so now we've got everything set up how do we combine those loops so everything so that sound flow is created really really easy all we have to do is click on b2 here and what this does it sends the signal from this virtual input to this virtual input so now the sound flow is created and if you do that this is what the final product looks like this is my setup. I used it this morning in a lesson uh, with one of my students. It works. So I can 100% say if you've followed the process correctly and you've selected all of these options, then it should work for you as well. Of course, one way to find out would be to do this with one of your students and just simply uh, a student who you know quite well, who wouldn't mind being a guinea pig for five minutes and just uh, have a lesson with them, test it out, play something on YouTube and say, listen, uh, can you hear this? It's good, for example, to, I don't know, choose some uh, music, like a piano playing in, uh, or whatever it might be, because that's instantly recognizable. If you, um, if you choose a YouTube clip of, I don't know, a news channel or something like that where people talking, um, it might not be so easy for your student to recognize that something is being played. So choose something which is evidently um, identifiable as another sound source. So as I said this morning, I used some piano playing and I said to my student, can you hear the piano? And the student said, yes, I can. Great, I know that it works. And so there we go. Now you can show a video on OBS and play it through Skype or Zoom. Now you can fully control the listening exercise in your online class. However, watch out. Remember, if you don't want your student to hear computer sounds, make sure that you that the B2 button is unselected. Now, this is to prevent any embarrassment. For example, on two screens, if you've got two screens set up like I have, or even a three screen setup, then uh, on one screen, you might have lots of things that you don't want your student to see. Potentially, there will be things that you don't want your student to hear as well. So just imagine that you're waiting for your student to finish an exercise. And in that time, you're looking at the other monitor. And I don't know, you might be looking at Facebook. And Facebook has got some videos. And of course, those videos have got sound. So the last thing you want your student to do is simply go, what's going on there? Why am I listening to this funny, uh, this sound or what's going on? So if you don't want the student to listen to computer sounds, make sure that that button is unselected. Fair warning, I don't want you to embarrass yourself. Okay, be sure to check out the other videos on my YouTube channel in which I also discuss other things that might help you with your online teaching, particularly if you're using OBS and Skype and Zoom. And if you've got any other ideas for any future content, then please leave them below and I will think about making some content for that. Okay, see you soon.